Welcome back to this clown's garage. In this video, I will show you how to connect a 100 amp sub panel to your detached garage. I will first talk about the wiring. I will show you diagrams. Then I'll show you how to do it in a panel already finished on both panels, how it looks like in the house panel and the garage panel. And then afterwards, you could continue watching the video and I'll show you step by step on how I did everything. So let me begin by saying um, this is how it's done in the US. So if, you, if you're watching from other countries, make sure you consult your, uh, your town, city, whatever you have you in the other countries and with your codes or whatever. Um, if you do live in the US, make sure everything is legal. Uh, you call your town and make sure you double check the codes, have, pull permits to get inspected, so far, so forth with licensed electrician. So this is how it's done. This is the house panel. And of course you have your main. And what you need to do this job is you're going to have to get a 100 amp dual pole breaker to connect the two hot wires going to your sub panel. Now in your box here, in your main panel, you're going to have your neutral bar, you're going to have your ground bar, and they're going to be bonded together, either by a green screw or some sort of strap. And of course the ground's going to have two wires, depending where you live. One goes to plumbing, the water main or whatever, and another wire goes to a grounding rod outside. And of course the ground's bonded to the case. Whenever I say bonded, I mean joined to. So neutral bonded to the ground and they're all bound, both bonded to the case. Now this is the only case, th this, this bonding over here from neutral to ground is only done in the main panel. Now the cable I got is called 222-4. It's entry service cable or SCR cable and it has a PVC waterproof jacket which is needed once you go inside conduit. Now, like I said, I put this underground, 18 inches, and 18 inches is counted from the top of the conduit. And this is, uh, I use Schedule 40 conduit. You have to check your local codes to see what you need to use underground, above ground. There's also Schedule 80 conduit, which is thicker than 40. And there's also metal conduit. Now, this cable, it's called 2224 because 222 is the two gauges, you know, they're all two gauges. Neutral is number two, one of the hot is number two, the other hot is number two gauge, and the ground is a number four gauge. Uh, if you use, there's two different types of cable here. You get aluminum or copper. I chose copper. Uh, if you go aluminum, you're gonna have to go a bigger gauge. Uh, also, if you go aluminum, you have to put no locks when you connect it to the bus bars, to the lugs, because it'll corrode. Um, aluminum also expands and contracts, unlike copper. Also, when you go, when you look for the gauge of the wire, make sure it's not too small because it could overheat and catch fire. And if you go a very long distance, make sure you have the appropriate gauge also, again, or else you can experience a voltage drop. This is the garage. This is the PVC conduit coming in. This is your ground going to your ground bar, your bus bar here. The two hots going to a 100 amp double pole breaker. Now this breaker is the same exact breaker. You, have to, you should match it to the breaker you have in the main panel. And all these breakers here should match all together. They should all match. The same make. Like if it's a GE breaker, they should be GE breakers. This is the neutral wire going to the neutral bar here. Now one key thing when you wire a sub-panel, the neutral and the ground should not be bonded. So mine had a strap connecting the two, so I just had to take it off. It was a shame because I like straps. And, uh, because I'm Greek, well that's another story. Over here, 
the ends of this bar are plastic encased. That means they're not bonded to the to the case. It's, a, it's an isolated bar right here. This should be isolated by itself. Now the ground bar, most likely you should take, you're gonna have to take the ground bar that's off on the panel and put your own ground bar and make sure it's bonded to the case. In other words, make sure you uh, screw it directly to the case so you ground the case too with it. It's very important. Any green screws on the panel should be taken off. You inspect the wheel, look for those. So mine had a little green screw here with a little angle uh, piece of um, wire that connected to the ground. So actually the neutral, sorry, that connects to the neutral. So that should be taken off. So any, any, um, any screw close to the neutral bar, it's either on the neutral bar or a little strap with it, that should be taken off. The green, the green screw is always on the neutral bar. And of course, my 100 amp panel, I, I ran a um, 4 gauge solid copper wire to a grounding rod in the back of the garage. And the grounding rod went down 6 feet, sorry, 8 feet into the ground. Now if you're on a 200 amp, sometimes they require you, have, you to have two grounding rods. Um, connect one, then 6 feet over, a distance of 6 feet, you should have another grounding rod going down 8 feet. So you should connect the wire going here, then, then the wire going to this one, to the grounding rod. That's if you have a 200 amp panel. Again, check your coding, the codes in your area. Now I'm going to show you inside the home first, how it looks like when it's all connected. Then I'm going to show you the garage. Alright, so this is the main breaker for the house. This is coming from the street. My two hot wires. Now also make sure, if you, have, if you have a 100 amp panel in your main, you shouldn't have a 100 amp panel in your, in your garage. You should have more amps in the house. Um, again, if you're feeding 100 amps into the garage, uh, you're not going to be running 100, chances are you're not going to be running 100 amps all the time. So you could have breakers that add up to more than 100 amps in the garage. Because if you have a welder, say 50 amps, and a lift, whatever, 30, 40 amps, whatever the lift is, you're not going to be running them, chances are, at the same time. So, you know, you could have more amperage breakers than what your uh, box is, what you're feeding into it. But you should always have more amps in the main panel than your sub-panel. This one here is a 200 amp upgrade, so I was okay with putting a 100 amp panel in my garage. Now one thing to note here is when you um, run your cable in here, your wires, make sure you loop them around and you have enough um, uh, enough wire in the future if you want to move the breaker somewhere else. Now this is my feed. This is the cable, the service cable, service entry cable right here. And I put it on a Romex connector and it comes in. Make sure you'd want to cut this you know, a couple inches inside the box. And these feed into this dual pole 100 amp breaker and this is the feeder breaker that feeds into the garage. Now I have 220 I'm running to the garage so I need a dual pole here. Another thing, this is a main breaker so your neutrals and your grounds are bonded together. So it doesn't matter where you put the neutrals or the grounds here, because they're bonded together. Alright, so the third wire, remember I have two hots, and these wires have color coding on them. Uh, one has a red stripe, one solid black, one has a white stripe, and I have the ground here. Now, Keep in mind where the run with the red stripe goes and the black, solid black, and you should put them on the same on the panel inside the garage. Uh, the white in this case is a neutral. The, so the solid black and the red stripe are my two hots. So this neutral wire goes straight into my neutral bus bar right here. I looped it down 
and all the way up. Now you might have to get a lug here to connect to your main bus bar. You can get these anywhere from Home Depot or Lowe's. So as you can see there too, they just attach to it. Or you can take two screws off and they go on there, they attach like that. And the ground goes to your ground. In this case, you could put it to your ground or your neutral bar. And I got another lug right there. And this case, of course, has two solid copper wires right here. One goes to the water main and one is, is, is uh, grounding out to the grounding rod. Now, this is how we ran it. And that's coming from outside. And we have fireproof um, orange great stuff, it's called. And you get that from Home Depot or Lowe's. I'll show you what it looks like on the outside, and then I'll show you inside the sub panel in the garage how it's supposed to be wired. This is the outside of the house, and you get one of these fittings. You get a hole saw that fits the end of this, and that goes into the ground. I dug a trench all the way over there. This is the back of the garage. Get one of those fittings again over here, and this opens up so you can pull it out, pull the cable out, and push it back in. Have somebody pull it in the garage. Same thing with the great stuff foam, the fire retardant foam. And this is the Schedule 40 conduit, goes all the way down. Now, some towns require you to have a um, metal conduit here or Schedule 80. Again, check out your local codes. And this is for the ground side, the copper cable, the wire, put a little PCV pipe here again, um, the foam, I put uh, duct putty over here, for a couple of bucks you get that from Home Depot again, Lowe's, and that goes down straight into my 8 foot grounding rod, into my connector here. Now another thing here when I dug the trench, I, I went, uh, if you dig 6 feet sorry, six inches down from the top here, you're gonna see red danger tape. So I also did that. And I also put it uh, six inches above the conduit. Uh, so I, I pretty much buried it six inches, put red tape, buried it. When I was close to say six inches from the top, put another red tape just to be on a safe side. And that goes all the way out to a nine degree bend out to the main of that, the main part of the house. Now I'm gonna show you inside the garage what the sub panel looks like. All right, so this is the sub panel in the garage. The sub panel should always be eye level. Um, there's always code on how high up it should be, so check your local code for that. This is about five and a half feet, so it should be eye level. If you're eye level, you're pretty much safe. Now. This PVC pipe here, these connectors, the plastic ones always connect to the metal ones, the same thread pitches. If you have a connector like this, make sure you have the plastic bushing underneath because you don't want the Romex to get caught over here. That's per code. Now over here, this is the, the equipment ground. This is the wire that's inside the cable, the service cable, entry service cable. And this was the ground bar. So the ground bar that was here before had plastic um, connections at the end over here, which isolated from the box, but you don't want that. It was like this, you see these plastic connections here, which isolates this bus bar from the case. You don't want that. You want something like this. So I took that one off, the old one, and I, I went to Home Depot or Lowe's, you go, I went to Home Depot, and you get this one, and you just bond it straight to the case. You drill it straight, to, you screw it straight to the case. In this case, I always had to drill two bigger holes to go into the case. So this, the ground should always be bonded to the case. And this is the copper wire going out. This is how I did it, to the ground bar in the ground. And this should be a minimum size 6 cable 
for that to be put code. Again, check your codes in your own town. Now over here, the neutral bar, before I go forward, this neutral bar was connected to this bar before, which is no good. The neutral bar should always be isolated from the case and from the ground bar. So there should be no connection between the two. Always take it out. There's a strap here, so I just took it out. Now you see how this is plastic over here mounted to the case, like I said before. This isolates the neutral bar from the case, which is what you want. And this actually had a green screw and a strap close to the neutral bar, which connected it. Um, didn't connect it, but it was to the side. But what you do is you turn this around and you could, you could bond this to the case. Always take the green screw out of the sub panel, always. And in this case, came with that strap. So you're not going to use that. This is how you want it. Isolate the neutral, ground, bond to the case. This is your equipment ground. Now, you got the two hots. The two hots, you know, run them, loop them. So if you, any, anytime you want to change this around, you have enough, enough wire to do so. And also keep in mind where you put uh, the, the one with the red stripe and the solid colored cables. You, want, you know, you generally want to put them in the same direction, up and bottom. So that's your 110-110, uh, both 220. Now, and this is your last cable, goes into the neutral bar. And over here, you have to get a lug for it. Also, one more thing. It's also a good idea if you have more than six breakers on a panel, you should get a main disconnect, like I have here. And always, when you put the face of the panel on, label what everything is, because that's also per code. But like I said in the whole video, always check your town codes to see what they are. They're all different. Now, if you want to see me do this install from scratch, step by step, you continue watching the video. Also, subscribe to my channel. You know you want to subscribe to this clown. Check out my channel, if you're a car guy, or a garage guy, or whatever guy, I'm here for everybody. Now, uh, on to the rest of my video. Thanks for watching.